around this one, but the see if I can help my photographer who has pressed a button that has switched it into timer mode. <laughs> well, this is not Okay, uh, web panel, uh, participants, Dale, Thomas, Esteban, Manco, and Nicholas, and uh, representing different technologies. We're going to have uh, five, four or five questions and one, or two, one minute or so for each of them to respond for each of them. So try, we'll uh, be trying to keep it fairly uh, prompt. The first question, and what we'll do is we'll go down the line um, for the first questions. Um, when, if you're the last one to answer, hold on to the microphone and you'll be the first one for the next question. So we don't always start at the same place. We're going to rotate who starts first. So someone grab the mic and uh, introduce yourself and your background in small talk and see if you can keep it under a minute. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Nicola Beton. I have a company where we sell smart notifications written mostly. Uh, previously, what was written in GNU Smart Talk, now we're slowly moving to Faro and Jamstow. Uh, I'm the co author of the EAD framework, and this year I did JTO. So I'm in my head. <coughs> I need a web framework. Is it okay? And we can't see you. Okay, now you'll see me. <laughs> uh, small talker since 95, and AIDA was actually my first small talk application at the time, and this is this, uh, you can see somewhere. Uh, Co-founder of the, my own company called Aeronome and uh, doing business with applications mostly. Uh, also, uh, 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 I'm uh, working on some web, uh, web uh, server and some uh, other things. Hello, my name is Nicola Beton. I'm a software engineer from Germany. I'm a co-founder and CEO of HRWorks, a business application in Germany. <coughs> Hi, I'm Esteban. Uh, I'm a small talker since ever. Uh, I founded in 2007 a small company named Smallworks uh, who creates mostly seaside applications. And I'm here because I, I make a brief which I want to talk in tomorrow. But I'm not really sure why they call me here. But <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Dale Hendricks, work for VMware. Um, I've been doing small talk since '85. I work for Tektronix, uh, let's see, Digitalk, Park Place, and now Gemstone, I guess twice, maybe as I can. Um, let's see, in the last few years, I've uh, worked on Glass, and then uh, in the last several months, I've worked on Toad. So, you know, again, I, I feel like Esteban, it's like, well, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a, a web developer, but I, except Toads, and I've got some experience there, so I'm a fresh web developer in, in small talk, so I've got that perspective. Hey, okay. Dale, why don't you keep the microphone and go ahead and tell us uh, in a minute or so about the background history of your tool and framework. Um, I'm going to go fast, because okay. you know, I get the presentation on Monday, the most of you saw, Glass and Toad, and, uh, you know, we'll get more time. Okay. Background history of tools, uh, framework. Okay, so I'll start with Iliad. Uh, we did Iliad at my company uh, because we, we wanted to integrate Ajax uh, in a society like framework and we wanted clean URL. Uh, I, I also have an IDOE background, so it was kind of a mix between the two two frameworks and some others too, like HTTP view. Well, I think that's it for, for the yard. Uh, about JTalk, uh, uh, it started with, uh, what's the name? CoffeeScript, I think. 
and Objective G. Then I started to write uh, an implementation on Smalltalk uh, on top of JavaScript. <coughs> then I took Clamato, which was the project, but very nice. I talked with Avi about it, and I kept going out, and now here it is. So that's all. Thank you. I started uh, AIDA Web uh, back in 1995, as I said, uh, with one vision uh, to combine web, uh, web philosophy with object oriented philosophy as much as possible. Uh, it was uh, object uh, oriented philosophy is kind of similar to the web, and this is still to the, this time. So uh, in, night, in uh, year 2000, uh, Aida was open source. Uh, in uh, a few years ago, we actually started to build also the uh, community. So we have now also Aida community website, many things you know, like in this. Uh, mostly it is used for business uh, web applications like oil and gas and pharmaceuticals and such. And uh, currently we are uh, coping to be up uh, with uh, web technologies uh, of this time. So when I first uh, learned the web, I thought, well, there could be never, never any application running on it. <laughs> and, uh, well, uh, you know what HR works is now, but since then I'm, I'm looking for the holy grail for user interface that, that that helps the user that occasionally uses it and uh, wants to enter the data and wants to be guided and wants to be comfortable and, and so on. Uh, and I'm lo looking for the for the real web interface. So maybe with the smart plan interface, we are near to this point. And so th therefore, I'm every day touched with the web. I'm already saved and my framework is Reef, it's a framework that's uh, built on top of CZ and it's a framework for uh, handling, uh, avoiding the complexity of uh, Ajax JavaScript uh, interaction between uh, CZ <coughs> and the client. Uh, I started to build it Two, two years ago, more or less, uh, because I get really upset with the way things are managed in CSA right now. <coughs> well, I think it's a great framework, and I want to try to demonstrate it that tomorrow. Very good. Well, hold on and then uh, tell us what alternatives or competitors for your. Uh, tool or framework exists both in small talk and outside small talk. No, and you fit all of them. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, being serious, uh, I think uh, the, um, there are some approaches uh, which I I borrow <laughs> to start this uh, more outside the small talk. Uh, community. In fact, I get inspired by uh, GWIT from Macau. I don't know how it pronounces it, but uh, which is a, a, a MVC component framework for Java, which is translated to JavaScript and it's a new client. Uh, in small in small talk, there is a framework called uh, I don't know remember how it's called, but Diego Gomez, Gomez Deck did it, and it does basically the same, but it had some problems, so I couldn't adapt it to uh, working in Seaside. Then I started with that idea, but not with the translating idea, but the component model, I, I started my project. Mm -hmm. So those projects were very interesting and are competitors <laughs> for my own project. Okay, well, all right, this is where I'll, I'll just take a little riff here and see where it goes. Um, so, the, the, the thing that I think about um, in the last, let's see, what, the Seaside from like 2007, 2006, right? 
you know, that's kind of like the desktop. You know, I mean, Seaside was uh, a way to build desktop apps in, in browsers and took that approach of, uh, you know, largely focusing on desktop style things and, and um, you know, and only, oh, let's see, now 1981, we had desktops introduced on computers and there was, you know, the Mac and other, and then eventually Windows coming along, having, giving us desktop apps in the computer. And then in the 80s and, and early 90s, we went to client-server apps in the 80s and 90s, and where these rich desktops were now hooked up to the back-end servers, and you were, you know, running running code back there. And of course, now we've got our browser running JavaScript and uh, rich Java client and their JavaScript client, and hooking up to back-end servers and doing things. So, you know, the competitors are, are you know, in some senses ourselves, all right? You know, because this is all, you know. I think uh, everybody, uh, everybody. You now we've seen these problems before, and I think if we look back to the past, you know, the old guys remember what did, what did we all do wrong 20 years ago, all right, or 15 years ago, or whatever it was. What were the problems that we were having back then, and if we could do them again, what, how would we solve them? Because we're facing the same set of things. It's JavaScript talking to you know, Smalltalk or another backend. So competitors are alternatives to Smalltalk as a backend. Would be the way that I look at it, and that's you know they've got Node.js. Um, the uh, uh, what is it? The MongoDB. Some of the some of the things that you can call directly from the browser. You know, these are these are things um, you know, for the web. That people are doing real stuff with these days. So, that's, that's uh, there, there is an alternative to Iliad uh, written in common list, I think, which is fairly similar to Iliad. It tries to solve other problems on top of it, but uh, it's continuation based, but except from that, I think it's very similar to, to Iliad. Unfortunately, I don't remember the name. Uh, so I'll uh, stop there for Iliad. And about GTalk, I think there are more and more languages written on top of JavaScript because recently it all of a sudden became a decent compiling target. So uh, name that pop. Uh, our coffee script or Objective G, which uh, tries to, to, to be an Objective C like language for, for the web with the app kit on top of it and stuff like that. But I think mostly, mostly coffee script and, and Objective G. <coughs> Alright, uh, okay, in industry, uh, industry we have uh, quite something with like this PHP from PHP to Ruby and all rest and everything. Uh, but when it comes to the time needed to do some complex application, I think uh, it's a small bit wins for this. And so if someone doesn't care about what is uh, kind, uh, we can use small talk items for, for, for small talk, for instance. Inside the small talk community, of course, uh, we are now free, uh, we are competitors and so on, we are but, uh, also collaborative, uh, we are uh, we co um, collaborate together. So, for instance, with uh, Iliad guys, Iliad was kind of synthesis, you know, uh, of AIDA and Seaside in something new. So now, uh, actually, those ideas uh, from Iliad are coming back in AIDA. So we, we also do, do synthesis. And this is nice, uh, you know, uh, spiral upwards, no spiral downwards. I think uh, we should uh, compete. Uh, the other side uh, cooperate uh, to, for the better uh, tools and demos in uh, small tools. Well, for us, um, our framework is not a product, it's just, uh, it's just driven by the requirements of the customers. And um, the, my goal was to, to connect a fancy JavaScript library to small or that's all. So there are hundreds of valuable um, competitors or, or, or similar solutions. I think this is impressive because JTalk is amazing. I thought about this, <coughs> writing this. So maybe I thought, oh, maybe later we will try this. But uh, well, you, you did it. It's, it's amazing. It's really great. I think it's impressive. I, I see such small talk in the browser. And uh, maybe you could connect smart client widgets so you will get real, brow real uh, windows, real browsers, because they are amazing. So. So, but, but we see everybody is doing this. Everybody is trying in a in a in a special way, uh, building for framework. So this is evolving. This is something you could write your PhD about. So mm -hmm. students. So this is an interesting topic. 
So continue your work. Yeah. Okay, I want you to hold the mic. And uh, last uh, earlier this year at Small Talk Solutions in Las Vegas, Javi Bryant said that the existing web applications, including Seaside, are obsolete. And he maybe does like to be a little bring out controversy, but uh, what, what's your reaction to that? What do you see for future for web applications, uh, both in the broader industry and uh, collaborating in the small talk community? Well, the browser is the platform. Everything will be in the browser, every application in the future. There will be no client-server application anymore. So in 10 years, everything is in the browser. Every software is available in the browser as a service. So the old kind of client-server software is that and well and that everybody is writing a kind of framework shows one thing there's a need for solutions that add value to this and well the problem is I'm, I'm following HTML5 actually there are no real widgets yeah? if you go to these uh, HTML5 demos there's not even a date picker available so you have to start and code your date picker with JavaScript and you click on and want to choose the date so there are millions of date pickers for example, so so there is a need for a framework because the, the industry, the, the uh, W3C consortium, they don't deliver anything. There, there is no solution. There is no standard. So so therefore we have these uh, these uh, well uh, a, a bunch of uh, frameworks that are doing mostly the same. So there is a requirement for for frameworks. There is still a need. Yeah, and will be. If, uh, if I talk from uh, either standpoint, I think uh, uh, from this uh, the original design from 95, uh, it seems that we managed to uh, find some uh, uh, right solution to uh, uh, to get the spirit of the web at this time. And this spirit of the web actually just evolved through the time with the uh, this uh, this moment, which is there is uh, more desktop-like applications on the web are more uh, popular, say, they are popular and more and more. But the original web is still there, and actually, I think that uh, also we need to uh, build such application that evolve from original web to the uh, more desktop-like. So this is also the plan for the ITA, and uh, we actually managed in the last uh, half a year. Uh, to follow all those happening without uh, quite like well, we evolution to say so I would not say that Aida is obsolete. That, uh, that, uh, okay, so uh, I think uh, it's a tough question because the the point of the question is based on the fact that seaside and and all the technologies are obsolete. But I'm not sure seaside is very obsolete. Maybe continuations and building the UI. Uh, from the servers obsolete, but Seaside, I think, is really about callbacks. And I, I don't think that's obsolete at all. I think callbacks are very much needed still nowadays and will still be needed in the future. If, even if UI and everything is built on, on the client, you still need to communicate. And, and communication based on callbacks is the, just the best way I've seen so far. For different reasons, for security, for, for for everything, it's very great. So, yeah, I, I think the way we build web applications is changing. We are trying to, to, to give better user experiences, and that goes with JavaScript and giving more importance to the client. But yeah, I think uh, callbacks are still the future. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm gonna, I guess I'll start off uh, and disagree with comments just a little bit that not everything will be done in the browser. I think you know, there, are, there are data sources in the, in the world and a lot of that can be done, but when you're doing applications that are shared applications or whatever, you end up having some level of middleware in there that does coordination before it just dumps into a data source. So I think it won't all be done that way. So, you know, that, that then. Uh, Let's say the presentation. Uh, how many will be done? Yeah. Well, 95. You know. I, I disagree that all of them will be done. You know, okay, I agree with you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the most, the most everything will be in the web. And, your yeah. music, your, 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 your movies, 
most of most we're, we're letting Dale open the window. Right? <laughs> most of the desktops are windows, and that doesn't mean that it's the best or that they're good. So, um, so, and I agree with Nicholas that the client server then becomes that the callbacks becomes kind of the, the, the challenge, all right, in building the web apps, all right. And so, what Avi was talking about was basically that you know generating your HTML uh, on the server. And Seaside gave that, that that ability to have the callbacks. And as a developer, you didn't have to think about, you know, you didn't have, you, you wrote your block. You didn't have to think about how to make that work. And that is a that doesn't exist if you uh, you know with the current apps with JavaScript based apps that doesn't really exist. That's kind of hard to do in Seaside to generate things on the on the on the on the server. But the encouraging thing for me is that Orca, which you, you may have had a chance to see on Monday night. Is the type of application that you know I think points towards the future. All right, and I also think JTalk. All right, is the kind of application that can point towards the future. All right, and in both cases, what you have is, you know, the thing that I see. You know, what? Why does somebody want a framework? Why? Why do you need to do something here? All right, um, I write JavaScript in the browser, and then I go hit my server, and what am I writing? I'm writing some weird SQL statement to go query stuff. Or MongoDB, I'm not even sure. You know, you know, what you want as a developer is a unified language, all right? And so the neat thing about JTalk and the neat thing about Orca, because they both have the same flavor, is you can write your application in the browser that, in Smalltalk, and then you can write your server code in Smalltalk, all right? Orca has the ability to define, um, um, <laughs> That Orca has the ability to define uh, basically server-side code blocks that are going to be executed on the server. So if you're not familiar with Orca, Orca generate you write code in the C side. Should I go through that? Okay. Um, so you know, I'll, I'll finish then by saying um, uh, that you know, really, the, what the framework in the future will be is some sort of.